Shalom. Okay, here we go. This is a drasha on Tazria Mitzorah for my students. Um, but anybody that's watching this can watch and enjoy. It's not a private drasha. And it is on Sedra's Tazria Mitzorah. This week we are privileged to have a double Sedra. We learn twice as much Torah that we do on other weeks. Next week we get another one with Achrei Moskadoshim. And this is what we're going to learn about. So Tazria Mitzorah is a complicated, um, it's a complicated Sedra because it deals with a lot of the laws of Tuma and Tara. Tuma and Tara are commonly translated translated as pure and impure, but really there's no English word. It's a mistake to say pure and impure, and I, it, it, it really like, it just bothers me. It bothers me when we say pure and impure because it's not, uh, it's not really true. It's not the real connotation of the words. It's just the legal status. We've done this before, but it's a legal status that one has, depending on the situation that they're in, if they, uh, if they come in contact with a dead body, for instance, they become tummy. There's nothing wrong with coming in contact with a dead body. You're not physically or spiritually harmed by coming in contact with a dead body. In fact, at times, the best thing you could do is bury a dead body, and therefore that would be the greatest thing you could do for yourself spiritually. It's the greatest perfection of the soul. So there's nothing uh, pure and impure in this week's Sedra. Rather, two mantara are legal statuses. The greatest, uh, the greatest consequence of being t uh, tame or yeah, is the fact that you can't go into the Beit HaMikdash, right? So the Beit HaMikdash, you're not allowed to go if you are, if you're a tame. So anybody that comes in contact with a dead body or any other, other causes of Tuma, can't go into the base of Mikdash. There are other consequences, but that's not the concentration. What we find in uh, in Tazria Mitzora, it discusses what's called saras, and that's what I'd like to the the topic today to be saras. And saras is a skin affliction, right? And like Tumantara, it's mistranslated. A lot of people think it's leprosy. It has nothing to do with leprosy. It's in fact, it is. Oh, they just shut the lights in here. It's not at all a. Uh, hmm. Let's see, hold on, let me move back a little. Sorry about that. Okay. It's not it's not at all a uh, it's not at all a skin infliction. In fact, it is uh, sorry, it is a skin infliction. It's not leprosy. Leprosy is a medical disease that causes you to uh, that you causes like your your limbs to to fall off. It's like a horrific, horrific disease. It's painful. Saras, there's no pain. Right, saras is not a uh, is not a is not a painful. Uh, it's not it's not a it's not a disease that causes any pain. It's a skin affliction that you get. Now, it, when you get this skin affliction, what you do is you go to a kohen, and the kohen is trained to see if the skin affliction you have might be leprosy. It might just be like some infection, or he looks at it and he's trained to see if it is if it is in fact saras. If it is saras. Then you have to leave the general area, the general vicinity of where B'nai Israel encamps and where they live. You have to be separated from the camp. That's the rule of somebody that has, that has saras. And, uh, and then what the person does is they sit for seven days by themselves, and they come back, and the calling checks to see if it's cleared up. Now, what clears it up? Right? What's the what's the cause and what's the what's the cause of getting it in the first place and what clears it up? So we learn is the cause of it. It's the most. Uh, it's incredible. It's a spiritual malady, meaning it's something that you do, right? Most diseases are caused by contagions in the air, right? Something that happens to you, right? You can you get you can you get contagious from a contagion from somebody, and you get saras. So that's what uh, that's what happens with most. Uh, that's that's how most skin diseases work. Here, it's it's something that you said. Hakadosh Baruch Hu then causes you to have a skin malady. Now, what's amazing about this? Is isn't so much. Uh, yes, it's true. It's incredible the fact that something that you say can cause a skin uh, skin problem, right? But it's not the. That's not the. To me, at least, that's not the most amazing thing. What the most amazing thing is that you, in speaking lashon hara, Hakadosh Baruch Hu interferes with your life, right? We have two ways that God relates to the world. The first way that God relates to the world is through what we call hashgacha klalis. Right? Hashgacha klalis is nature. It's the natural way of the world. The natural way of the world is it runs by cause and effect. Right? I do X and Y occurs. So if I run into the street with my eyes closed, right, and it's a busy street, so I'm gonna get hit by a car. Right? That's what happens. That's that's the cause and the right the cause is I ran into the street without looking, and the effect is that boom, I get hit by a car. Right? But when it comes to when it comes to uh, that that's nature, that's cause and effect, right? And that's how I, that's how all of us run our lives. And that's how Karsh Baruch Hu has the general world running. But here and there, God interferes with the natural course of, the, of, of life. Right? And how does he interfere with the natural course of life? 
he comes in, and, and what does he do? He, uh, right, you, you, you have somebody who's, uh, right, you have somebody who's, who, right, who's sick, and you pray very hard, and Kodesh Baruch Hu says, okay, this person is a, uh, is a tzaddik, and he deserves for, for the course of nature to be, to be, uh, the course of nature to, to be changed for him. So what a Kodesh Baruch Hu does is he changes the, uh, he changes the course of nature, right, for the person, the person gets better. Great. Okay, but that that's called Hashgacha Pratis. That's specific divine, um, specific divine providence, right? Where Kosh Baruch Hu changes the course of nature. He splits a sea, right? And, uh, he causes a, a bush to burn without a bush to a light on fire without it burning, right? All these things are where Kosh Baruch Hu changes the natural course of events. Generally, the only time a Kosh Baruch Hu changes the course of events for a person is if they are a tzaddik or an absolute rasha. The the amazing thing about Tsaras, says the Sforno is that Saras is where Kaj Baruch Hu, it, it, it like, uh, interferes with the natural course of events and has it changed. Because all of a sudden my skin was healthy and now it is no longer healthy. Now it's unhealthy. It has this affliction called Saras. So then I go outside the camp. What's the purpose of leaving the camp? The purpose is that now I have to reflect. How do I get rid of this Saras? So I get rid of it by doing Teshuvah. Right? I repent. I sit there and say, okay, wow, I have this saras. It was a bad mistake. I spoke about this person. Uh, imagine, we speak Lashon Hara willy-nilly. Like we, we're not even concerned when we speak Lashon Hara. Many of us don't even feel just even a, a small, slight amount, not even a dash of guilt when we speak Lashon Hara. But really, imagine if every time you spoke Lashon Hara, your skin would turn a color. You'd have to leave your house for a week. You'd be out in the middle of, uh, of nowhere for a week, living in the middle of, uh, of like the Everglades for, for a week. And you have to live there, for, you know, away from where everybody, where everybody lives, thinking about your actions, and then hopefully during that week your tshuva would be genuine and a Kodesh Baruch Hu would take this affliction away from you. What's amazing, what's absolutely amazing is that a Kodesh Baruch Hu interferes in order to, to give you this, this skin affliction. And the question is why? What's the purpose? What's the, what's the benefit? Why would a Kodesh Baruch Hu change the course of nature just because you sinned? And it really tells us everything we have to know about a Kodesh Baruch Hu and about how he punishes. Right? How does God punish? What's the purpose of His punishing? Right? When you do something wrong in class and a teacher punishes you, why are they punishing you? So if it's an amazing, amazing teacher, they're punishing you, right? Why? Because they want to teach you a lesson. Right? If it's not such a good teacher, then why? It's a, it's, a, it's a reaction, and they're upset at you, right? So they react. The same thing with parents, the same thing with anybody in a, in a, in a uh, position of authority over somebody else. Right, a Kodesh Baruch Hu, though obviously he's he never re, he's, he's not a reactionary. Right, Kodesh Baruch Hu is perfect. So the only reason why Hashem would do something would be to teach you a lesson. That's the only reason, right? It's to teach you a lesson. It's to have a right. It's to, it's to make sure that you understand and to help you improve. That's the idea. So what is Saras now? Saras, as the Sforno explains, is a supernatural occurrence where Kodesh Baruch Hu doesn't. Where Kodesh Baruch Hu generally doesn't change the course of events for people and the course of nature for people. What happens here? All right, what's the idea here? Kodesh Baruch Hu does, does change the course of events, right? He changes the course of events, and but for one specific reason. Kodesh Baruch Hu changes the course of events in order for you to become a better person, in order for you to improve on yourself. And that's the idea of this week's Sedra. The idea of this week's Sedra, what it teaches you, is that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is out there. He created the world for one specific reason. Right? Again, we don't know why HaKadosh Baruch Hu does stuff, but there's only one sensical. By process of elimination, obviously God gets nothing from the creation of the world because God is perfect. So therefore, the only reason why God would have created the world is for our own benefit. Is for mankind's benefit, for mankind to perfect itself, for humanity to become the best it possibly could. Right? And therefore, when we stray from that path, when we leave the path that Akash Baruch Hu wants us to follow, when we leave the path of perfection, when we follow our instincts and we no longer are leading the life of the, of the intellectual giant and the person of perfect character, Akash Baruch Hu sets us back on the path. And how does he do so? By teaching us a lesson. The Tsaras is that lesson. Lo Alina, but we live in a time where we don't have those messages. Saras is no longer applicable because the Kodesh Baruch Hu doesn't deal with us in that same way. So now it's incumbent upon ourselves, even more so, to watch out and to make sure that we are becoming better and better people, even without those divine signs. That's my idea for Tezriyam and Sora. What I'd like you guys to do is send me a text message with that idea. And please, give your parents some nachas. Give them some pleasure. 
let them, let them hear what we learn about. Tell them tonight at the Shabbat table what we learned about, and let them get some pleasure out of the fact that they're sending you to a great, amazing school with not so bad teachers who teach you great ideas. Have a great Shabbat, guys.